Welcome back guys, this is level 55, 100% crit, 3 million damage hyper warrior build today. It is so strong that you will deal more damage than some players deal on level 99 with their characters. But in fact we will only use 77 ability points. So this is the ultimate proof, your damage comes from your gear, not from your ability points. And of course everything you see is Nightmare, so we have 77 ability points to own everything here on Nightmare. It feels like a 99 build and that makes it so satisfying. The build also mostly consists of legendary gear, so you can really easy make it. You don't have to grind for epic gear. For the most part you can enhance the build of course with some epic weapons, but I wanted to make it as easy as possible for you, so that you can just jump in, make this build right after watching this video. But now let's check out the damage values here. We will start with the light attack which will deal up to 190,000 damage when you attack from behind. The heavy attack will be 270,000 damage and when you use stealth master all these attacks will deal even more damage overnight. For example the charged heavy attack is able to deal up to 950,000 damage which is enough to kill mercenaries instantly on nightmare. I have only invested one ability point in Fury of the Bloodline with this build, but that is still enough to deal a combined damage of 750,000 to 1 million damage, which is enough to kill a mercenary or nightmare. The overpower attack will deal a combined damage between 2 and 3 million every time. When we compare that again with the animation cancel on the staircase, we will see that it is well over 3 million damage for the overpower attack. Also the devastating shots are incredibly strong with over 1 million damage here. Absolutely fantastic killing every mercenary instantly if they are on the same level. Normal assassinations will be enough to overrun any enemy except for the mercenaries and polo marks which you have to kill either with rush assassination or critical assassination. I prefer rush assassination most of the time because you can kill more than one enemy with this ability. All in all this is a really powerful build, it is almost as strong as you can even make it on level 55. You will really enjoy this game when using this build and it is really easy to make. In order to have 100% critical chance and all the damage you see here in the build, you have to make some preparation so that you are really able to engrave all the things that are needed to get 100% crit chance on level 55. Here in the inventory you can already see that we have 34,000 warrior damage and 109,000 assassin damage. The warrior damage value here is really high, it would equal around 200,000 damage when you would be on level 99. So that is really an insanely high amount for level 55. This build is a mix of legendary and purple and blue gear because the legendary set is relatively easy to make and easy to obtain. Then there is a lack of good swords in the game where I choose the epic swords here instead because they have warrior damage, damage swords which are the better engravings here for this build and the blue item is our bicorn bow which amplifies our left weapon damage by a factor of 1.6 by using the bicorn bow glitch so that's a really special item a bugged item of course you don't have to get any of these items if you prefer to play with only legendary gear i will show you a only legendary gear variant later on of course you can also replace all items with epic items with the same engravings that's absolutely possible except for the bicorn bow because that is a special glitched item to make this build you should first click on the engraving symbol in your inventory and check your engraving status. The dots to the left and to the right of each engraving marks the engraving tiers. The engraving tiers are connected to the percentage value of each engraving. So if you have the maximum amount of dots then you have the maximum percentage value. If you have only the half amount of dots only the left side then you only have half of the amount of the maximum percentage value. This is similar to the points to the engravings which are on your weapons, but on your weapons they level up when you level up the weapons. But these are the challenges for your own engraving skills. You can upgrade them by killing enemies with a certain weapon type or by completing some Ostra cars for example. And when you reach level 5 then you have completed your challenges and can only further upgrade them at Hephaestus workshop. Here adrenaline per hit for example is an engraving that can only be upgraded when you solve ostracas around Greece. The ones you have to upgrade for this build in order to make it work is 20% crit chance while full health. That engraving can be upgraded by solving 5 certain ostracas around Greece and then you have to further upgrade it at Hephaestus workshop. Another one here on the arms is critical damage while full health. That also requires you to solve 5 certain ostracas around Greece and then you can further upgrade it at Hephaestus workshop. Also very important is to upgrade 10% crit chance to the maximum. These are the 3 engravings which we need when we engrave our items. The ostracas you have to solve for critical chance at full health are Hund Dogged, Stadium Love, To the Edge of the World, Rightful King and Odo in the Court. 
And the other Ostra cards for Critical Damage at Full Health are Procrastinate Now, Star-Crossed Lovers, Prophecy Prevention, Bottomless Lake and Stone Cold. You can look up the locations on the tips website and it should not take you longer than 30 minutes to solve all these Ostra cards. Before you then go to Hephaestus workshop to further upgrade your engravings, you should make your way to the S2 mercenary tier. The S2 mercenary tier grants you a special perk with 20% discount on all your purchases at Hephaestus workshop. You probably have to beat a couple of level 60 mercenaries to get into the S2 tier. The easiest way to find high ranked mercenaries is when you look for the grey ones, the ones which are not engaged to you. They are likely to be higher level than you, so they likely have level 60, 65 or even higher than that. Even when you reach bounty level 5, sometimes they do not engage you. So the chances are high when you see a grey mercenary that this is a higher ranked mercenary which just ignores you for the time being. When you kill him, then you directly climb up one spot on the ladder. Of course you don't have to reach the S2 tier, but then the upgrade costs will be higher. The Hephaestus workshop is located in Malis, then go to the Mizen cave and there lies the Hephaestus workshop. Welcome. Hephaestus workshop looks like a normal blacksmith in that ancient cave, but instead of purchasing weapons you can purchase your engraving upgrades. For example 70% crit damage at full health. The cost for upgrading increased per level, but that shouldn't matter. You only have to upgrade 20% crit chance at full health and 10% crit chance to the maximum tier 10. That should only cost you 800,000 drachme and that's the amount you should normally have when you use the normal progression. So which means when you started from level 1 and sold all your useless epic items, not the good ones of course, only the ones which are really crap, then you should have enough money to buy 10% crit chance and 20% crit chance here to the maximum level. When you are done with all the preparations, then you can actually start to make this build. For this build as usual I wanted to use two perfect warrior swords with warrior damage, damage swords and critical damage. The first sword here I engraved with armor penetration. You can see that we have only 6 dots here next to the engravings, therefore we have only 18% damage swords instead of the usual 30% damage swords which we have at level 99. So we have just reached the tier 6 of the engravings and that's the case for all the engravings here in that build. We only have tier 6 engravings fixed on the items because we have just passed level 51 with these items. The percentage values will raise when you level up the items. So when the level of the item reaches 61, 71, 81 and 91, they will get all the 4 missing dots and reach 30% damage assaults and 50% critical damage at the end. Every item you find, even if you find it on level 1, will upgrade to the maximum percentages at level 99. One of these swords can be found at the A Friend in Need quest in Attica. So if you haven't done that quest, I really encourage you to do it. It will literally give you a perfect warrior sword for free. It will have warrior damage, critical damage and damage swords on it. It is called Hater's Harper. You can actually keep the sword when you lie to Hater that you lost the sword and then you will keep it at the end of the quest. However, if you can't get the sword anymore, then you have to go to the blacksmith or you pick one of the legendary replacements later in the video. For the other sword I used another weapon with warrior damage, damage swords and fire damage. I wasn't able to find a second sword with critical damage in the time I had for this build. So if you have another perfect one with warrior damage, damage swords and critical damage then use it. But fire damage is also pretty good here in this build. And on that weapon I engraved 100% damage but health cap to 25%. Whatever weapon you play with here, if you don't like to play with swords, if you want to play with daggers for example, the most important thing is that your melee weapons have the damage with your weapon type. In this case it was damage with swords. If you play with daggers or if you play with spears, then you have to have damage with daggers and damage with spears on it. That is the biggest damage driver and whatever you play with, you have to have these engravings on your melee weapons. For the bow I used the Bighorn bow which is only a blue item but it is a glitched item that greatly increases our warrior damage. It has hunter damage, adrenaline on headshot kill and I engraved 10% crit chance on it. I can now engrave 10% crit chance because the 10% crit chance is based on my own engraving skills here. The adrenaline on headshot kill is based on the level of the item, on the level of the Bighorn bow which is only level 55, so it is tier 6 engraving. But I engrave 10% crit chance because that is based on my own skill and so I am able to put much higher percentages of crit chance on these items. The Bighorn bow glitch adds all the 2400 DPS of the bow to our left melee weapon. So when we unequip the Bighorn bow and replace it with the Hades bow here for example and then we reload the inventory screen, we only have 22,000 warrior damage instead of the 35,000 warrior damage. 
It's a 1.6 damage increase. When we equip it again and reload the screen, we will be back at 34,000 warrior damage here. So even on low level, the Bighorn Bow does a really good job. And it is not only increasing our warrior damage to be 34,000, it also sets our hunter damage to be 34,000 hunter damage. And that's how we are able to deal more than 1 million with the devastating shot at level 55. That's really incredible. And if you get any item from the Helix Door, then I really recommend you to get that bow. It is the most powerful item in the game. For the armor set I wanted to make it easy for you so I picked the complete Nemean line set here so that you don't have to go for the epics instead but if you want to, if you don't want to buy that of course you can go for the epics with the same engravings. When using epics you will probably have even more critical damage because you have more free engraving slots here. On the headgear I used the same trick here. We have warrior damage, critical damage and I engrave a fully upgraded 20% crit chance at full health on the Nemean line headgear. The Nemean line set also has a 10% critical chance bonus on top of all the things we have here in the set. So that makes it really easy to get to 100% crit chance. The set bonus is independently from the level of all the items. So we get 10 percent crit chance no matter what level we are here. On the bracers we have warrior damage, 60% critical damage while full health and I engraved also a 10% fully upgraded crit chance here with my own upgrading skills. And then on the belt we have warrior damage, critical damage while full health again and another 10% fully upgraded crit chance here. And on the torso we have warrior damage, 12% health, really not needed, that's the only bad engraving here in the name and line set. Then we have 25% crit damage, I could have upgraded it even further to 30%, 35% or whatever, but I didn't want to continue to grind for money here. When you level up you get higher level gear that sells for much more money, so you can just purchase all the stuff in the Hephaestus workshop really really easy. And then here comes a problem, on the boots we have warrior damage and 12% crit chance while full health already on the item. So we cannot engrave our own 20% crit chance, so in fact we have to compensate it with the 10% crit chance from the set bonus. So in fact the set bonus will only have a rest of 2% which we get out of it because we have to compensate the 12% crit chance here on the boots. But this small amount of 2% will still save us a lot of mastery points here in the mastery abilities for the crit chance. And then we engrave the item with 60% crit damage while full health. That's also the reason why we have to go for the Ostracars for the crit damage at full health to engrave it here on the boots. The whole set will have 257% warrior damage, 140% assassin damage and 155% hunter damage. We have 54% damage with swords which is really good at that level here. We have 100% crit chance at 415% crit damage. We would have even 445% when we have an additional 30% critical damage from the second sword. But that's not a big deal, we have partly compensated it with the fire damage. Of course you should definitely go for two perfect swords here if you want. Then you have the perfect level 55 crit build. If you don't want to grind for the perfect epic sword and if you can't get the Hato's Harp anymore then you can go for the Milani sword here if you have it with assassin damage, damage swords, the critical chance of hero strike, it's not needed because we have 100% crit chance anyway. But then you can engrave 100% damage but health cap to 25% on it. And then you can also use the Prometheus Seeker with warrior damage, fire damage and 15% fire damage and build up and then you can engrave armor penetration on the Prometheus Seeker. That build will give you 28,000 warrior damage when you use the Bighorn Bow but of course you can also replace the Bighorn Bow with the Hades Bow but when you then reload the screen you only have 18,000 warrior damage left. That is almost only half of the amount than the 34,000 we had at the beginning in the normal build so I really recommend you to use the Bighorn Bow, reload it and then we are at least at 28,000 and that's a really good value. You don't have to grind for the Bighorn Bow if you want to have that item then go to the Helix store you can get it. But of course it's totally up to you and it will still be a very good build even without it. There are two other items that can potentially help you to get to 100% crit chance. One of it is the copycat sword which you can get when you do the writing a wrong quest in Lucris and the other one is the master of waters when you do the test of judgment. In the test of judgment you have to make sure that you choose the Poseidon pass and then you can loot the secret chest in Hephaestus foundry. These are the only two melee weapons in the game that have crit chance on it. So on level 55 you will get a 6% crit chance from any of these two items. At level 99 they will have 10% as well. The total amount of ability points used in this build is no more than 77 points. That is exactly the amount of your level plus the 22 tombs you can do around Greece. 
You don't need any additional points from any DLC, the Atlantis or whatever else. You have just to have these little amount of points. I will show you which abilities you need to get to 100% crit chance and to use this build. First of all you should go for 6 cents, put 3 points on it, then you can slow down time for 8 seconds, you can overrun almost any enemy with a normal assassination even in a frontal attack and it doubles your hunter damage. So 6 cents is always a real no brainer, you have to get it in any kind of build. Then you should invest 2 points on arrow master which unlocks either poison or fire arrows for you. Then I recommend you to go for at least one hunter ability here, I recommend the devastating shot, it is very easy to use, deals 400% hunter damage and then archery master for the hunter damage, headshot damage and refilling your adrenaline segment so always good for any kind of build as well. The charged heavy attack especially really really powerful with swords, deals 300% damage instead of 150, the description is wrong here. Then go for Weapons Master, all the bonus stuff here, 10% crit chance you get from Weapons Master, so that is really needed to get to 100%. Gear Master, Armor, then you should invest 3 points on Flaming Attacks, then you can activate the additional fire damage whenever you want. Fire Mastery gives you 40% additional fire damage, really good, a high amount for free here. Then Overpower Attacks, 3 points there and then you will unleash 3 million damage attacks to any mercenary, they will just melt away when you use it. Fury of the Bloodline here, there was only enough points left to use one point here, so if you have Fury of the Bloodline then use it, if not then you can put that point also on Critical Assassination. If you get more points from time to time then here you can go forward to use Ring of Chaos in the future, but second wind is always mandatory, you should definitely have this. In the Assassin tree we go for Shadow Assassin which gives you 40% Assassin damage and 50% crit damage, very powerful crit damage, really needed here. Then Rush Assassination, 3 points, that's almost enough to kill mercenaries, works 50-50, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, then you have to make another hit. Critical Assassination, that's where you could spend your points on to kill the mercenaries really really easy. Then Stealth Master of course, 10% bonus damage overnight with anything with all your abilities. Then let's check out the masteries, not many points here this time, but still very important. We go for 12 points on crit chance, you don't have to go for the full 20 points here because we still have 2% left from the Nemean line set bonus, so we can save here 8 points on the normal crit chance in the hunter tab and when we go to the assassin tab then we can also save 5 points here on the crit chance at full health, so in total we save a total of 12 points from the Nemean line set bonus and then we go for 8 points on damage with swords which is still really good, it gives us 18% additional damage with swords which is still powerful even on level 55. So don't underestimate damage swords. The most important thing is here go for the crit chance, then go for damage sword, and then you can look for anything else when you got more points. The abilities where you should invest your future points are the crit damage while full health, the damage while full health, then of course the assassin damage and also max out the damage swords at all costs once you have the points, then warrior damage of course here in the warrior tab, that would be a no brainer of course, still when using the bighorn bow it also amplifies your hunter damage, then in the hunter tab there's an additional crit damage here and also headshot damage and damage with bow charge shots, so these three are also good when you max them out. So if you have any questions left how to make it with epic gear or how to make it with the legendary gear I've shown to you, then don't waste your time, join our discord, ask the people there and don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.